So if you're a parent, you most likely have had that moment where you've been woken up from a dead sleep, being poked by a crying child telling you a pain that they are having in their ear. Or maybe you've been on that trip of a lifetime when you start with that familiar ache in one of your ears. Or even more common, your little one at home starts to get a little fever and is pulling at their ear. In this video, we're going to dive into these scenarios and talk about ear infections. What do you do about them? What are things you can do at home? And when should you be seeking care? Coming up. Welcome to Family Med, your medical home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, and today we're talking about ear infections. So, we're going to keep it fairly simple today in discussing the main sources of ear pain that you tend to see as a parent or even with yourself. We'll be focusing on the most common place that gets infected, the middle ear. There are other types of ear infections that we'll likely address in future videos, but for today, we're going to deal with the most common one. We'll address how you treat it, when it's necessary to take an antibiotic for it, and when it's better just to watch it. So, let's talk about the most common infection that we see in regards to the ear, and that's the infection of the middle ear. In doctor talk, we call it otitis media. Now, in children, we tend to see symptoms such as ear pain, especially with lying down, tugging or pulling at an ear, difficulty sleeping, crying more than usual, acting more irritable than usual, difficulty hearing or responding to sounds, loss of balance, fever of over 100 degrees or higher, drainage or fluid from the ear, headache, or even loss of appetite. In adults, it's a little more simple. Common signs and symptoms in adults include ear pain, drainage of fluid from the ear, or diminishing hearing. Ear infections tend to happen more after a recent viral illness due to the swelling that happens in the middle ear creating fluid areas that are primed for infections to grow. So what do you do about them? Well, let's talk about treatment. Now, when we talk about treatment, it's important to understand that there are two main types of infections that we see. One is bacterial and one is viral. I don't want to get into too much doctor lingo, but it's important to understand the difference because there are very different ways in which you treat it. When an ear has a bacterial infection, we call it acute otitis media. These are a lot less common. The second type we call it otitis media with effusion. These tend to be viral. Now, the names don't mean a whole lot to you. All you care about is your kid's ear is killing them, but it makes a big difference to your doctor because depending on what the eardrum looks like, gives us a good idea of which is which. Ultimately, it matters because there are significantly different treatment approaches that we take for each of them. So why does this matter? Well, it's important to know because antibiotics are worthless in treating a virus. Even if the eardrum is red and bulging out at you, well, then it's more likely to be a bacterial infection and may benefit from an antibiotic. Now, if the ear is just red and angry looking, but not bulging out, then it's more likely to be a virus and the antibiotic would be worthless. So, red and bulging likely needs an antibiotic. Just a red ear likely doesn't. I'm not going to go into the depth today about the dangers of overuse of antibiotics today. Maybe we'll address that in another video. But the short of it is that the more we use antibiotics unnecessarily, the less they're going to work when we really need them. Unfortunately, ear infections are one of the leading reasons for unnecessary use of antibiotics. So hopefully watching this video will help you be a little better educated as you speak to your doctor on your options for treating this. Unfortunately for you, the patient, there really isn't a way that you can know whether your child you know, has without a good exam. So does that mean you need to run to your doctor every, or the emergency room every time your kid complains of an ear pain? Well, thank goodness the answer is no. So when is it you should seek care? Well, the answer to this is going to be vague but simple. It really depends on the severity of the symptoms as well as the age of the child who's suffering through it. Now for kids, if your child is less than six months and starts with fevers and pulling at their ears, they really should be seen. The risk of them getting sicker is higher and more likely to be a condition that needs antibiotics to treat. Over the age of six months, it's going to depend a lot on the severity of the symptoms. If they're having significant pain or fevers that you can't control with normal doses of like ibuprofen or Tylenol then they should probably be seen. If their symptoms are lasting over 48 hours without improvement, then it's also probably a good idea to go in. Hopefully this helps you feel a little bit more comfortable about when you should go in and be seen. In the absence of severe symptoms, 
you have a little time to work on some home treatments and see if they can get better on its own. It's important to remember that most ear infections start out being viral and oftentimes can be actually cleared on their own. Most of the time your body's going to do what it does best and just fight it off on its own. Since it's really the body that does the fighting here, the most you can really do at first is work on just controlling the symptoms. This is usually just accomplished by taking some good old ibuprofen or Tylenol. Both can be very effective in controlling the pain and symptoms related to just that ear infection. Now, follow the dosing instructions on the bottle. Some may not know this, but it's also okay to take both medications by alternating them. You may want to talk to your doctor about this, but to my patients, I'll often recommend taking each one every six hours. So if you stagger them, uh, then you can alternate one every three hours. Taking something more consistently usually gets pretty good coverage and helps control those symptoms a lot better. Again, remember, if it's not working and you're still having a lot of pain, it's probably a good idea to go be seen. So, what's available at home that you can try and treat? Unfortunately, here is where we lack a lot of good clarity and information. There are a lot of claims out there, but unfortunately, it's hard to make any good recommendations due to the lack of evidence on the subject. Some things that I've seen people advocating are things like garlic oil, tea tree oil, chiropractic care, ginger, olive oil. Again, the data on these just are unfortunately lacking. In general, they're not felt to be harmful. There are plenty of people out there that will swear by these treatments, but remember, most ear infections actually get better on their own anyway. So just because you didn't go to the doctor and get an antibiotic and it got better, doesn't mean that it necessarily was from these treatments. So the only caution that I would give in trying some of these alternatives is if there's drainage coming from the ear, I'd recommend maybe you ought to get that checked out before you start putting things in there. If you have a ruptured eardrum, you really don't want to be putting a lot of drops in there. Besides Tylenol ibuprofen though, it can be helpful as well just alternating warm and cool compresses. This is done by just getting a washcloth damp, either cold or warm water, and then placing it on the ear for 10 to 15 minutes each. Okay, so let's say you or your child's pain is gone, you know, for a couple days and you decided to go see the doctor. What should you expect? Of course, they're going to do an exam and try to determine whether they feel it's a bacterial or viral origin. And really, a good exam can actually do a pretty good job with this. If you come in with severe symptoms and, then, and the exam looks consistent with the bacterial source, then likely they could recommend some sort of antibiotic. However, if symptoms are not severe or haven't been going on a long time or it's just felt to be viral, then a lot of time the recommendations will be to just watch and wait. I know this can be frustrating, but as I said before, a lot of time your body will clear the infection on its own without the need of antibiotics. Studies have looked at mild to moderate infections and have found that even when felt to be a bacterial, there actually wasn't a dramatic difference in the time that it took for symptoms to resolve, whether they were treated with antibiotics or left alone. So as frustrating as it can be to go to the doctor wanting that quick fix and not getting it, it really is better sometimes just to wait. Follow their advice. They really are looking out for your child's best interest. Okay, so how can we work on, work on preventing them in the first place? I think this is the most important part. First of all, get your kids vaccinated for both the flu, the pneumonia, and then there's one called the Haemophilus influenza. Okay, these are standard common child immunizations. Wash your hands and teach your kids to wash their hands frequently. Now, get rid of the constant use of a pacifier. In one study, it showed that the elimination of a pacifier use decreased ear infections by one-third. Also, don't give infants bottles to sleep with. Besides dental problems, it also increases their risk for having ear infections. Stop smoking. Smoke exposure for your kids also increases their risk. Breastfeed your baby at least six months, preferably even a year. There are some other things that have been looked at that aren't quite proven. Some people talk about maybe using xylitol. This has actually been studied. It's, it's a common sugar substitute that it has, uh, does show some antibacterial properties. It's recommended actually a lot in, de in the dental world to help kind of prevent cavities. It's also been looked at in the prevention of ear infections and it has shown some promise in a couple studies. But unfortunately, the amount that you actually have to consume in order for it to be effective is a little bit difficult. The studies showed that it was only effective when you were taking like five times a day to show that you know, benefit in the prevention of ear infections. And as well, unfortunately, one of the side effects can be a lot of stomach upset and gas. So it's a little bit hard to take enough to make a difference with that. Another thing that's been studied as well is just probiotics. And unfortunately, studies looking at these haven't shown any significant promise. So 
Hopefully the biggest take home point from this is that a lot of the time ear infections don't need to be treated. Try and control their symptoms and if that doesn't work, take them in to be seen. So there you have it. Hopefully you've learned something today about ear infections and now feel more comfortable about how to deal with them. Remember, check out the notes below, review the things that we talked about, and then go ahead and comment below as well. What are your experiences with ear infections? What things have been have you found to be helpful? Are there things that you found to be useful that maybe we haven't talked about? And there are certainly a lot of things out there that can be helpful, so, so let us know what you think. Also, are there any other subjects that you'd be interested in seeing in future videos? Let me know. Talk, tell me below. Now, I've also attached some links for some products that I recommend to my patients in the notes below that may be able to help you as well, so check those out. Okay, so if you found this information to be helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, and check it out, all the other videos that we have on this channel as well. So remember, my purpose in sharing this information for you is to educate you in things that you can think about in trying to make decisions about your own health. In no way should it be taken as direct medical advice to you and in your situation, so please consult your own doctor for concerns regarding your specific situation. So until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Eric Richardson. Remember, please take care of your body because it is the only one you have.